Saturday, August 13 is hashtag NAD2016, Neuro Rehab Awareness Day. A day where we celebrate neuroplasticity, the brain and the spinal cord's awesome ability to adapt and recover. Why August 13? Hi, I'm Jacqueline. Pedro Manuel Bacchirita, my grandpa, was born on this day in 1959, aged in his late 60s. Grandpa Bach suffered a stroke. His face was paralyzed as well as half of his body. In 1959, neuro rehab meant four weeks in hospital. And after that, there was never any hope of recovery. No one believed the brain and spinal cord could recover further. But my Uncle George had other ideas. Every day, he turned daily life activities into hours of exercises. And what did this achieve? Grandpa Bach continued to recover at home and over time was able to return to work. This inspired my father, Paul, to dedicate the rest of his life to turning neuroscience findings into neuro rehab practices, helping to shape other people's lives. For 400 years, neuroscientists and some of our finest clinicians thought that the brain was like a machine with parts. And that meant that if it was damaged in some way, through a stroke or a brain injury, or brain disease, by definition, nothing could be done because machines do many glorious things, but they don't grow new parts. Several decades ago, some major neuroscientists began to appreciate that this model that the brain was hardwired might in fact not only be wrong, but spectacularly wrong. The brain and the spinal cord, the central nervous system, can actually form new connections once existing connections have been damaged. Neuroplasticity is that property of the brain that allows it to change its structure and its function in response to mental experience and activity. It's not just something the brain can do under duress. It's how the brain works in everyday life. And what these new modes of neural rehabilitation are doing is just activating these innate properties of the brain to do things which seem impossible. I've spent about 15 years traveling all around the world to try to better understand how neuroplasticity works. And one of the most important stories I, I came across was the story of what happened between George Bachirita, Pedro Bachirita, and how Paul Bachirita used Pedro Bachirita's brain in autopsy as a way of understanding that, in fact, not only can the brain change in life, but it can change even at the end of life. The brain is plastic from cradle to grave. And that if we understand this plasticity, even in cases that we've written off as hopeless, we can sometimes help that person put their life back together again. But one of the most important lessons out of all of this is that even after the initial insult or injury, there's a window of opportunity to work on forming new connections in the brain between different areas of the brain that can take over from the most damaged areas. And that means that rehabilitation shouldn't be a one or two or three or four or five or six week process. Those discoveries while completely established now in neuroscience, have only slowly found their way into clinical practice. Nearly one in six persons of the world's population lives with the physical, emotional and financial impact of life after neurological conditions, such as a stroke, acquired brain injury or spinal cord injury, or diseases like multiple sclerosis or Parkinson's disease. Despite the discoveries of people like Dr. Paul Becky Rita, Australia's neurological rehabilitation system remains under-resourced and undervalued. Investing in care, disability and return to work programs for carers or individuals with disabilities makes good economic sense, especially if it's supported by a strong neuro rehab sector which is helping individuals to maximise their ongoing neuro recovery. Funding neuro rehab is as important as funding research for a cure. And that's why the AIN needs your help. 
help us fund a not-for-profit national community centre for neuro rehab, connecting Australian communities with doctors, therapists and researchers leading the way in the USA. Help us get more Australians standing and exercising in their communities with stimulating new technologies.